Hi everyone, I will start by saying that you will have to bear with me. I have had a cold for the past week and I am still fighting it. So the congestion that you hear is very real and struggling, I'm struggling. But I have a voice today, so I'm just gonna go ahead and film my rap and hope that you can understand me. So every year, if you're new to the channel, thank you for being here this year. I appreciate your coming and finding my little corner of the internet. Every year I do some sort of New Year's video. Usually the past couple years I've been doing my Spotify wrapped as a video and going through and talking about why each of the songs made it into my top five or 100 or whatever. So that's what we're gonna do today and we talk about my goals and the new year. So let's do this. So. I guess we should just start with my Spotify wrapped, which I actually wrote down this year. Aren't we proud? I feel like we should be proud, if nothing else of this. Um, so, yay. Here we go. This is my bullet journal. I had two this year. I started with a almost TARDIS blue, not quite TARDIS blue, and went to a charcoal gray in October, I think. So yeah. Anyway, Spotify wrapped. My top artists were Taylor Swift, again, Dodie, which I was surprised about, but okay, Maisie Peters, Imagine Dragons, and Sarah Bareilles. I was surprised that Regina Spector didn't make it to the list this year, but besides that, I wasn't too surprised. Soundtrack, which was a cool thing they did this year. My opening credits was Long Story Short, which is a continued thing you will see here. My final battle song was Fight Song. My game show moment was Be Okay by Ingrid Michaelson, which I thought was really funny. <clears throat> and my moment of reflection was Exile by Taylor Swift. My top genres were theme, Broadway, pop rock, indie pop, and Celtic. So that's fairly consistent over the years. I listened when they rapped which was December 1st. I've listened to Spotify a lot more this month than is accounted for here, but for 32,790 min minutes. So my top five songs, one of these songs has been in my top five for the past, I think three, maybe four years. I'm curious if you remember which one it is. I don't think you will, but I'm curious. So my top song was Long Story Short. Uh, second one was Wonderland by Churches. Third one was Walking the Wire by Imagine Dragons. Fourth was The List by Maisie Peters. And the fifth was Broken Ones by Anna Clendening. Um, so yeah, if that says anything about my year, there you go. <laughs> Um, it was a year of experiences, and I'm very thankful for that. But it was very far from a easy year. I, I don't know, 2020 was a year of a lot of firsts, and a lot of, I guess, realizing who I could be, and overcoming a lot of things. This year was kind of a continuation of that, but at the same time, I don't know. I I don't feel like I can fit the word fit the year into any one moral or anything except this continued thought of be brave or just keep trying is another one there. So, long story short, uh, when Evermore first released, long story short was not one of my favorite songs. I loved it because of the Alice in Wonderland references and I thought it was very clever, but that's really all the significance that it held for me. On the beach trip in January, I had a moment where I was sitting on the balcony and I listened to the song and I was like, this might mean more to me than I think it does right now. And I had the same moment with Evermore 
right in that week too and it was just sort of this realization that this could mean a lot more to my life right now than I think it does and long story short just kind of spells out this year and last fall in more ways than I can even explain in a video so we're just not even gonna try but long story short, it has been a song that I've listened to at least once every day. Number two, Wonderland by Churches. This I listen to this song a lot. It's on my dance playlist and it's just on a lot of my playlists. That's the thing with my Spotify raps. All of these songs are on my playlist I listen to almost every day, whatever year. Wonderland is just a fun song and it's also harsh. It has a lot of mean a lot of things let's just put it that way um walking the wire has been a favorite song since it released so i'm not surprised it's on here the list again it's just a hard reality broken ones too number six was home to you by um sigrid i think i don't know how you say it i'm sorry uh i was surprised that this made it to top six because this was a top song last year but it's still just sort of this feeling of the people who mean everything to you who feel like home. And I don't know, I guess I'm still searching for that. Number seven was Sick of Losing Soulmates by Dodie. Which I was really surprised because I didn't think I listened to that song this much this year. But apparently I did, so that speaks for itself. Number eight was Peace by Taylor Swift, which is another song that I listen to every day. It's literally the alarm I wake up to. So I was surprised that I didn't make top five, but whatever. If You Need Me is number nine. Come Out and Play by Billie Eilish is number 10. This is a new song for me this year and is one I've listened to quite a bit. Scribbles by Madeline Page is number 11 that that one usually makes top five top ten so no surprise it's here number 12 was willow by taylor swift number 13 was arms 14 was every night by imagine dragons i listened to that song a lot more this year than i have in the past and it just continues to be more to me every year and i've been listening to it twi for a lot of years so i it's interesting that that's the one that I've kind of clung to. 15 is Vanilla Twilight by Owl City, which is just a sweet, depressing song if you're looking to cry, it's a good one. Number 16 is Daylight by Taylor Swift, which is another song that I listen to almost every day. And we see why Taylor Swift is my top artist, right? Number 17 was Issues. I found this song, I think, in January of this year, and was just like, this is a good one. I'm keeping this one. And it was one of those that Spotify was like, all right, hear me out. You love all of these songs. Here's a suggestion. And it was actually a good one, so I like it when that happens. Number 18 was Would You Be So Kind by Dodie, which is just one of my favorite Dodie songs. 19 is Bright by Echo Smith. 20 is Call It What You Want by Taylor Swift. 21 was Fight Song by Rachel Platten. 22 is Secret for the Mad by Dodie Clay. 23 is Zero by Imagine Dragons, which is one of my absolute self songs. 24 is It's Nice to Have a Friend by Taylor Swift. And 25 is Go As We Go by Ben Platt. And I'm going to stop there. If you are curious about the rest of my songs, I may link the Spotify wrapped playlist down below. That That's a fun thing I could do. So anyway, that's my Spotify wrap, wrapped. So yay, you survived the first part of this video. And now we get to go into the slightly deeper side of Lainey um, and talk about my goals and my words. And last year I showed you my mood tracker, so I'm going to do it again this year. <clears throat> again, we have a lot of purple and green. 
if you're new here. Pink are the really exceptional days, blue are my worst days, and purple's okay, and green, two shades of green, dark green is closer to blue, and light green is closer to purple. So, there you go. I don't know. Um, so yeah, lots of okay days. My goals this year was to take two trips, which I did. My family went to the beach in January, the week before school started, actually two days before school started last year. And then this November, I got to go to Georgia for a couple of days, which was a blast. The second goal was to begin the second draft of Lily, which <laughs> I didn't touch the book this year. And I'll, okay, I say that I did. One of my friends was reading through it back in January and February, so as she was reading it, I was making edits, but she only got like 15 chapters in before chaos erupted, because that's what happens in the middle of a semester, and I didn't go back this fall, so she hasn't continued reading it. So that's as far as I got on Lily this year. Maybe next year. I don't know. I was tired. I wanted to do three cosplays this year, and I did two. I have two marked off here, so I'm not even sure, well, okay, I did Jenny Weasley for her birthday, and I did Felicity for Halloween, so I guess that's what I was thinking. I didn't complete any cosplays this year like I wanted to, I just didn't get any sewing done this year, which I'm surprised about, but, you know, we had a baby instead. <laughs> And by that, I mean my sister had a baby, and it's living in our house. I didn't have a baby. You didn't miss anything there. <laughs> um, Vita, I did the majority of it until I got sick with COVID and had to give up the last week. That was fun. August was a ride. Uh, escape roll, I did almost every day of home in April, so proud of myself for that. Write a Doctor Who short story. I did, and I finished it, and I submitted it to the contest. I didn't win, but it's okay. I am still proud of myself for actually completing a full short story because I've never done that before. Even when I had to do it in high school for a composition class, I ran out of words to actually be able to finish it, so I had to throw an ending at it, and my teacher was not happy with me. Driver's license didn't happen. Every time I plan to go driving, I get sick or something else happens for me not to be able to do it. But it's going to happen. New year. It's gonna happen this year. Get published. It, it, it just didn't work out. It wasn't really a big enough priority for me to put myself in the stress of it. Um, I am hoping to get a few poems published in the new year, so we'll see if that happens this year. And for the next one, I need to count, so I will see you in a minute. So the goal was to do 80 videos this year, and I published 66, 67, including this one, videos on YouTube, and I think I did five or six videos on Instagram. And then I have my doll channel, which I have no clue how many I did over there. So I would say I almost got 80 if I didn't get them all. And I think that was all of my goals for that I wrote down, at least, for 2021. So My last year I did a word for every month. This year it was more of a phrase for every month. But January was adapt. February was be patient with yourself. March was allow yourself to simply be. April was move but don't race forward. May adjust to where you are. June develop. July engage with where you are. August dream. September trying. October adventure. November discover whatever is here. And December has been believe in what can be. I made the decision in April that I wasn't going to be going back to Bellhaven in the fall and so the majority of the year was spent figure out how to be at home again and who I can be at home 
and what I can do with where I am. And so that's why a lot of, a lot of my words were just about being present and being content in the moments that I could be, even though I was used to a much faster pace of life. Things are very different at school than at home. And I knew that from last year, but it was still a very hard adjustment for this year. I take back what I said about not being able to sum up the year. One of the main things this year was, especially during the beginning of the year, there were a lot of times where I thought I was dying. Um, and I don't say that to be dramatic. I say that because my health was very scary there for a little while. And again, in August and October, there were several times where I thought I was on the verge of death. And there were other times this year where I truly felt what it could mean to just be alive and be happy being alive. And I think that both of those showed me the importance of being alive and enjoying life as it is because it's not guaranteed. And also not wanting to settle for life because you know that it can be good. And so on days when it isn't good, there's this urgency to find the goodness again because life is fleeing. And it's this tricky balance, but I think in many ways, my condition and my pain grounded me this year to make me realize that there is a lot of worth in my life and my life deserves to be celebrated while I have it. Anyway, there's my rambling New Year's post. I have 20 seconds to wrap up this video. Thank you for being here. Happy New Year's. I will see you all in the new year for some exciting new adventures. I have a big project that's coming up in February and I'm so excited for you to see it. If I can get it done. Thank you for being here. Happy New Year. I will see you in 2022. I did want to say 2021 really was a good year and it had a lot of rough moments, but overall it was a good year and I hope to remember it that way.